All eyes are on Ukraine this evening as a major war breaks out. Looking at the satellite imagery, this is the infrared channel since we're coming into the tail end of nighttime. We've got a major weather system down in Turkey, some extensive convection out in the eastern part of the country. And then we have a different system up to the north. This is of Atlantic origin and in between is Ukraine. Ukraine located right there, Russia up to the northeast. So they're going to be under the influence of some ridging. Now this imagery that we get is rather flat. It doesn't have much contrast. However, we can switch over to the nighttime microphysics. This loop does happen to start last night around the time the war broke out, 24th at 01Z, so that's going to be about 3 a.m. in Ukraine. Again, this is last night. You can see some cloud material in the western part of the country and further south, an extensive cloud shield out there south of Greece. So when I roll this forward, you're going to see a transition into daytime and that nighttime microphysics package stops working. You can see that we can't really make much sense of the data, but then nighttime falls. And that's just a few hours ago. The system in Turkey has moved eastward a little bit. The warm conveyor belt and convection found down there near Syria. But take a look at Ukraine right here, an extensive area of stratocumulus across the central part of the country. Now Kiev is somewhere right in here, so they're going to be underneath this cloud cover. But it does look like it is fair out in the western part of the country and further out to the east. So what you're seeing here is low cloud. This is probably stratocumulus stratus, maybe about 3,000 feet. And the red shades, those are going to be patchy cirrus up at about 25, 30,000 feet. And then we can see the baroclinic cloud elements further to the west with that polar front coming out of Germany and moving into Poland. Here's the weather analysis for this afternoon. Yeah, it is kind of stormy down there in Turkey, but let's head up to the north. Ukraine located right in here. And that's going to be Kiev getting a little bit of rain within that patchy stratocumulus. And then further out to the west, yeah, it does look like it's clear. So any military operations out there involving manned air assets probably will have a good view of the ground. And same thing further out to the east until you get to the southern region of patchy, low and mid-level cloud. So there's a better look at that polar front coming out of Germany, extending from southwest of Copenhagen through Berlin, south of Munich, and down towards Toulouse. Back behind it, temperatures drop about 10 degrees Fahrenheit, a little bit of snow, and this is going to be the warm sector, temperatures in the mid-40s, a rather mild night. And we can see that that warm sector is starting to advance eastward into western Ukraine. So we should see a little bit of a warm-up as this weather system approaches, start picking up that subtly gradient for tomorrow. And then inevitably that cold front will arrive. And further south, we are looking for the possibility of development along the tail end of that front that could bring a weather system out into Turkey and start accelerating the northerly flow, which means probably a cool down in a few days. And I did forget to mention, most of the weather stations in Ukraine are reporting. These are going to be synoptic observations I'm not 100% sure how they're getting into the GTS network run by WMO. I believe that goes to a data center in Kiev, which is linked probably to Moscow and maybe back to Romania. But there's a possibility there could be satellite uplinks as well. I did notice that the METAR observations, 
yeah, those do appear to be out through most of the country. This is handled by the aviation circuits, the AFTN network. That's completely different. So that may have been taken offline for who knows. But Lviv, which is out to the west, they are still reporting. Now, if I take you back to last night, I guess this is before the invasion. You can see that stations were reporting. This is 23Z, so about 1 in the morning. And as the night progressed, you can see a little bit of rain there at Kiev. And then somewhere around 0304Z, we lost a lot of the data in the interior. And then as we advanced through the rest of the day, 11Z, 12Z, and so on, a few of the stations begin disappearing. But thankfully, yeah, the Synoptic Network is holding on. And so I'll take you through that forecast using the ECMWF products. This is going to be 18Z just a few hours ago. There's the cold front moving through Germany, warm front, and that's going to be the warm sector right there. Ukraine located off to the east. And it does look like we catch a little bit of that precip down there around Crimea from that Turkish system. As we go forward through the night and into tomorrow, that cold front advances rapidly to the east through Poland by 6Z, which is going to be about six hours from now. So, yeah, we are getting some of that southwesterly flow in western Ukraine. And this is going to be about 8 in the morning, Ukraine time. So starting a new day here. Looks like a little bit of snow developing out in the area around Kharkiv, way out to the east. However, the prevailing flow looks like it's still out of the south. And I think right around this point, we're starting to get the cold air advection. This is going to be about 24 hours from now, Saturday at 0Z, so tomorrow night, 2 in the morning, Ukraine time. So I think that's going to drive the tail end of the front through the country. Looks like it's a dry passage. And continued cold air advection, kind of a cool down. The thickness values drop. In fact, there's the thermal trough moving into the northwestern part of the country for late Saturday. Meanwhile, yeah, things are really going to town out around Italy. If I run that back, you can see that weather system developing on the tail end in western Italy. And going into Saturday and Sunday, you can see it moving towards Turkey some wintry weather with that and as it moves into the Black Sea we start getting a stronger advance of cold air from the northeast so that's going to be cold northerly winds a cool down for Monday Sunday going into Monday and maybe even a little bit of snow down to the south and look at that a little Black Sea system by Wednesday Here's how the temperatures look in degrees Celsius. Those are going to be 40s down into the 30s at nighttime. By Friday, you can see it's much warmer. Mid-40s around Lviv, probably 46, 47. And then we start getting some of the cooler weather as that cold air advances south on Saturday. Not quite as warm on Saturday. And then you can see the cooler weather for Sunday. 30s all day and freezing at night. There's more of that cold air coming south. Looks like only a warm up of, uh, yeah, mid 30s for Monday. Single digit Celsius. And pretty much the same weather for much of next week. Let's take a look at the weather here in the U.S. Some inclement conditions in the Midwest region. Freezing rain being reported at Indianapolis down to St. Louis and into the boot heel of Missouri. Snow to the north of that and a lot of rain showers down from Kentucky to southern Arkansas. In the wake, we still are filtering cold air into Texas and Oklahoma. Oklahoma coming up into the 20s today. 
Temperatures a little bit warmer also in Texas. And looks like down in the Big Bend, they're up to 77. So they're catching this warm sector in northern Mexico. So that hasn't quite cleared West Texas just yet. But further out to the west, yeah, there's some cold air, some Great Basin ridging, and even a few snow showers in the Snake River Valley. And just a quick look out to the west. Alaska looking a little bit warmer. You can see that very deep southerly flow coming up across that warm front and into the Gulf of Alaska. We're starting to see 40s out there around King Salmon, Kodiak up to 43 right now. And even up near Nome, they're well above freezing. So as a result, we're bringing in a lot of rain into the Alaskan interior. But up to the north, on the north slope, we've still got Arctic air in place. Across Canada, pretty much the same situation. Cold air in place. It does look like the deeper cold air is out around Baffin Island, minus 33, around Pond Inlet, and much warmer out to the west. They've had a little bit of downslope coming down from the northern Canadian Rockies. And out in the Atlantic, yeah, we've got ourselves a very powerful weather system south of Greenland, extensive snow, well-developed triple point there, a deep occluded low south of Greenland. Let's check out the pressures on that. Looks like earlier today it was 962 down to 958 at the current time, and it's continuing to deepen down to 949, 945, 944. Eventually, we looks like we bottom out around midday tomorrow at 942 millibars. Of course, that's nowhere near a record, but still, that's quite deep. And a very strong pressure gradient south of that, that would be really dangerous waters to be crossing. Winds probably well up above 50 to 60 knots. And since this is a special edition, we're just going to do an abbreviated look at the weather. That winter weather system moves up from the Midwest into Pennsylvania. Freezing precipitation across the northwestern part of the state. Extensive snow from upstate New York back towards Detroit. And that'll move into the northeastern U.S. Snow for Boston, Burlington, and Maine for Friday. Moves rapidly to the east and leaves us with a nice weekend. A bit cold, but you can see those very high pressures developing across the Great Basin area. 1047, that's way up there, and that's indicative of extensive cold air trapped in these valleys. Very strong nighttime radiational cooling contributing to that and very little to dislodge that air because the southern stream system way down there in the Gulf, the northern stream system up here, and they're just kind of in between. Some rain coming into Texas for Saturday, an upper level disturbance traversing the area that moves into the southeastern U.S. and develops a very weak wave out in the Carolinas. And next significant development, Alberta Clipper, around Chicago for midweek and looks like a push of cold air later in the week into the eastern U.S. And that'll do it for this special Thursday edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you very much for your support and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>